give those comments when that item is on the agenda? I will. Would that be okay? That's fine. Okay. Can I speak on another matter? Sure. Uh, we have a representative from the uh, Caltrans here, and I noticed in some information I received that the uh, Caltrans is supporting a uh, proposal to increase the uh, annual uh, license renewal fee by 1%, and <clears throat> I came through Los Banos, well, I came from Los Banos, but yesterday coming through back from there, or the day before, I noticed that in order to paint the stop signs, the four letters for stop and the crossbar, there was a pickup truck there, there was a utility truck and a paint truck, and it takes six state of California employees to paint that, those, that simple thing. And as a taxpayer, there's no way I'm gonna support any kind of a tax increase when we have to have six people to paint a crosswalk and a stop sign. I think I've said enough. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay. Or we had, do we have uh, Robert McLaughlin here? Or is there someone? Oh, there we go. The oral report on the Citizens Advisory Committee. I'm Larry Harris filling in for uh, Mr. McLaughlin. The Citizens Advisory Committee met on uh, November 1st, 2013 to discuss <coughs> and recommend the final draft of the 2014 Regional Transportation Improvement Program the Regional Transportation Plan Preferred Scenario, and a letter of concern with the upcoming truck and bus regulations. We also had information items that were presented, the five-year bus procurement plan, UC Merced update, Regional Transportation Impact Fee Report Fiscal Year 2013 and 14, the first quarter, Citizens Advisory Committee Agenda Calendar 2014. And announcements that were presented was the uh, Science Cafe that's uh, held at the uh, Coffee Bandit on Main Street. Uh, they had a meeting on uh, November 18th at uh, 7 p.m. I mentioned my name, Larry Harris. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Larry. Next, we have the uh, Regional Waste Management Authority meeting. Uh, item number five is the minutes of October 17th. What's the desire of the commission? We have, before we do that, though, welcome uh, Director Villalta. That didn't sound like a very good excuse. It's as good as you got, though, huh? Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of October 17th. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next we have uh, Brooke Steyer, the oral report monthly update. And Welcome. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank and you. I, I have pictures. Sorry, I always have to have pictures. Um, verse one, again, we're comparing month to month the comps, and uh, you can see Last year, we were at 19,000 tons, and we're at almost 24,000 tons. So it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is all, this represents cash in the coffers. And I also want to point out that Monday was the first day that we started charging all customers. And Monday was the first day since, wait, excuse me, all charged customers, excuse me. Yeah, we, are, we just didn't charge them properly. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the details. But how long have you been here? The, a year? So that's the first time in a year. We went over 1,300 tons on Monday. We've never had over 1,200 tons 
ever on a day. And Monday was the first day we started weighing every customer, and we have 100 tons more than any other day ever. So that just goes to show you that we probably should have been done, doing this for quite a while. Okay, and this is the October comparison. Again, the, the other one was September. We didn't have that last month. But this is October. We had 22,000 tons. Now we're almost at 26,000 tons. This is just terrific. Uh, some of the updates. We met with all the uh, – we had a meeting yesterday with all the member agencies, or they were all invited. And we discussed the holiday collection schedule for next year. We discussed the community cleanup dates. And we, discussed, we asked for input on the recycling RFP because we're going to put the recyclables back out to bid probably early next year and talk to them about the way the system is set up, the way the payments are way, uh, made, and those kind of things. And so we asked them for their input on that. We are still working on the expansion, the next phase, whether it's going to be the Valley Fill or 6B, which is where we're filling now. And so we're getting estimates that we should be have back in a couple of weeks, probably at the December meeting. I'll be able to tell you whether it's cheaper to build one versus the other and how much cheaper. And then we will hire, if it is, looks like we think it will, that the Valley Fill is going to be significantly cheaper, we'll start the CEQA process on that early next year. We've, we're still in discussions with Tuolumne County. We talked to them, I talked to them yesterday, and they are going to try to get it on their agenda for the middle of December for approval. It still hasn't been reviewed by their attorneys, but they hope to get that done Friday or Monday of this week, or Monday of next week. And Margie and I had a meeting up with Turlock this morning and met with the city manager and the public works director and Turlock scavenger, who's their hauler, and had a very good meeting discussing the, con we gave them a copy of the draft agreement and they're looking for um, last weekend in, or last meeting in January or first meeting in February for approval of that contract. It's all very positive, no red flags there at all. So looking good. Uh, sale of surplus equipment. We've been talking to Ritchie Brother Brothers. That's uh, the nation's largest equipment auction. And <coughs> they came back this afternoon with an estimate. They, they told us they would give us $700,000 if we just sold them the 16 pieces of equipment and let them auction it, and they would spend $65,000 refurbishing and repainting and some minor repairs to get it looking good for auction, and so they would just give us $700,000. And we don't think that's really a fair price, so we're going to uh, – we're probably going to do some of the repairs, or, uh, price them out on ourselves and get those done so they look good for auction. And then we may – what we're going to suggest to Margie is that we actually do an allotment of half the equipment in February and then see how that goes and learn from that and then do another percentage uh, after that. And I want to just talk to you about the excess equipment. I know you've already approved this, but I just want to show you. This was the grinding composting area. And so these, every one of these circles represents a piece of heavy equipment that we operate. And then the red dot or red circle represents the one and only customer at the site. I didn't count those up again. There's like 15. <laughs> we, we have some extra machines there. And then I did the same thing down at the landfill. Again, this is prior. This is a couple months ago. But there's all the machines that we have there, and, you know, we just have a lot of extra equipment. Okay, the soil contract or the sale of soil to granite's going really well. They have 40 trucks basically running during daylight hours. They're pulling about 500 loads a day. 6,700 cubic yards a day. So we're making almost $7,000 a day every time, every day they're on site. And they figure they'll be this first phase, they'll be there through January. And again, this is soil we don't have to uh, move. And I just took a picture to show you. This is the old road in, the back way in, and all these trucks are the trucks that are taking soil. So the site's been very busy. And that's the one of the excavators and the trucks as they load. And it's a, it's a huge excavator and a big bucket, basically one scoop per truck or per bin. And, there's, and Jennifer, again, has to be my model. <laughs> and Blue Ridge Services, we got done with the, uh, their training and test cell with our employees. And it went really well. The employees were really grasping the concepts and not using soil and using the tarps. And we should have in another, another couple of weeks, we'll have some benchmarks. In the future, I won't be talking about 
before and after and the, and the things that I'm talking about today will just have the benchmarks of how well we're doing. And we'll get to use those. Like you can measure the tonnage, we can measure the density and how much soil we're using. <coughs> So this is the test cell that they worked with us on, and this is basically the first day. And you can see the garbage going in. It's very flat, but it's a very large area. And this is the second or third day, and again, it, it get, just goes higher up. And it's, they call it a pancake. It's just a flat lift. And every night, it, it looks kind of messy there, but that's it at the end of the day. And all the waste is pushed up on top. And you can see how flat and how level it is, and how smooth the tarps are. That means good compaction. That means we've walked in the garbage well. We've got the low spots filled with soft garbage around the heavy, bulky commercial stuff, and that's the way we should do it. And so we're just shy of the right number of tarps, but they're supposed to be here next week, and we've asked the state to allow us to use tarps up to 21 days. We haven't still got approval on that, but basically we did this test cell for 14 days, and we went 14 consecutive days and used zero cover soil. Remember, we were putting on two feet every night. And so you can see that getting taller there, that's the same area, and you push up for a week, and then you drive up on top and you push down. So now the trucks have gone around up to the top and are pushing down, and we'll just move this over every two weeks. We'll move over about 100 feet. For a week, we'll push over, and then we'll drive up on top and push down, and that will be our fill sequence. And this is the way we used to do it. You can see how small the area is and how there's just dirt it's hard to tell from that picture, but I, I've got several in here that you can see how small the tipping area was, how thin it is, how low it is. Our last lift was 23 feet tall. These lifts are five or six feet tall. And then again, you just see the a sea of soil that we were using. And see how thin it is? That's a great picture to show you. The lift even isn't even, it's about as tall as a pickup truck. And then we have two feet of soil going on it. So that's why we were doing it versus the way we do it today. So there's a dramatic difference. And so I went ahead and just pulled, and this is probably the last time I'll show it to you in this format, but just show you the impact in four months. In June, we used almost 13,000 13, gallons of fuel. And in August, September, and October, we're down around 8,000 gallons. That's a 39% reduction, and that's almost $18,000 a month in savings from how we used to do it. And the gasoline, remember, in September was the first month where we started saying the supervisors could not drive the pickup trucks home. So in June, we were burning 848 gallons a month. And in October, the first full month of the supervisors not driving the trucks home, we burned 306, 64% reduction in unleaded fuel. And then the cubic yards of cover soil, in June, we, we used 8,800, and in October, 2,200. And the next one is the big one to me, the ratio to MSW. MSW is garbage. In June, 46% of the material that went in the cell was soil. And in October, it was 11%. And the value of that at $18 a yard was $119,000, so we're now we were filling up the landfill with dirt, now we're filling up with garbage and making revenue. And, and then the scraper hours, another one, we're using them 70% less time. So this is just a, a snapshot to show you that the improvements that we made starting in August and September are continuing, and from here on we, will show, we should have some really good benchmarks, and I won't go into this detail, I'll just show you how the cover soil ratio and the tons we took in and the density, and we'll be measuring it every two weeks, and so it'll really will be in a production type environment. Yep. Any questions of Brooke? Just one second, Jerry. Mike? Or how do you reach the Oh, there we go. Uh, Brooks, and, and those practices that you listed reflected both sites? Yes, except we, ha we the tarping machine, we took the one that was at Billy Wright and moved it over to 59, and we've already ordered a, a cheaper model, a less expensive model, it's around $40,000 to use over at Billy Wright. They're using alternative daily covers of the mulch or green waste. Mm -hmm. And then we s should have them in the next few weeks, we'll have an, a small machine and use it over there, and then again, no soil at all. And so the mulch then, what happens with that? 
or the, the coat? What we want to do is now the rainy season, we can put it on the side slopes of all the closed cells and the areas where we're, wor where we're not working or accepting waste, and that prevents erosion and prevents dust. And those are measures that the state wants us to take, and they will count that as diversion, just like using it as cover and just like making compost. It's all the same credit right now as the state is concerned. So the important question is you still are very emphatic about saying separate the green waste from the regular garbage. Absolutely. If it has garbage in it, we cannot use it. So it has to be segregate, segregated. We have to keep it clean. It is exposed. It's used on the landfill, and so they don't want to see any garbage in it. You know, because that's come up several times, and, and I try to tell them $10.50 a ton for green waste as opposed to what garbage costs. And so is there some way we can get some kind of press release or some kind of, uh, of, of, of bulletin out to say that, uh, that, you know, please continue to separate your green waste from your garbage and use the green can because this is keeping your, your tipping fees down. Sure. Because, and then if we could get some kind of, and maybe some kind of, uh, of, of presentation in Los Banos of the best practices of what we've instituted now and what we're saving and what it's going to save the, the, the rate payer in, in the future would be, would be great. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jerry? Yeah, my question got answered, so. Okay, Lynn, do you have a question? Other questions? Thank you, Brooks. Thank you. Fiscal year 2013-14, operating budget revision number one. Nadia Gonzalez. Good afternoon. The budget revision number one reflects what the board asked us to do at the last governing board meeting. You wanted us to reflect the reduction in staff, how it would impact our budget. So uh, we've now that we've had the individuals identified, we've gone ahead and uh, plugged in the numbers or reduced them from the appropriate categories. And the total savings uh, that we saved this year is about $655,000 because of doing the staff reductions as of November 1st. Okay, so the requested action is to approve the operating budget revision number one. What's the pleasure? Dan, is that you? Okay, motion. Second, Joe Alvera. Questions? Lynn? The, uh, the looking at the I think when we have one of these concerns about green waste and whether or not it is being profitable to collect and utilize green waste or not, uh, is it possible in our budget to, are we tracking what it costs us to do green waste, what it's costing to do the recyclables? Or can we do that? Even, I, I don't know whether it needs to show up on the report, but I just want to make sure that we are able to answer those questions when, because I know they're going to come up. We can offer a more detailed report if you would like on those programs. Other questions? Okay, we have a motion or a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number eight is uh, 2012 electronic annual Cal Recycle Report for information only. Is there any questions on that item? Anyone in the public? Okay, next is the Transit Joint Powers Authority meeting, minutes of October 17th. If there's no corrections, I entertain a motion to approve. Oliver, a motion, second, Davis. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 10 is information and discussion only. Transit Joint Powers Authority for Merced County five-year bus procurement plan, and item B, Transit Joint Powers Authority for Merced County, UC Merced update. Comments on those two items? Mr. Green? No, oh, is there any question? Lynn, did you have a question? I think he's just there to answer questions. You got a question, Lynn? Yes, 
Yes, I do. Go ahead. I was looking at this, uh, the number of buses that were over and uh, in two categories. And could you uh, go through that again on how we're planning on rectifying that? Sure. All right, we, we looked at our fleet, um, both in paratransit and in fixed route, with the current demand of the new route revisions that we had. Um, and based on having a less than 20% um, spare ratio in our fleet, we have too many buses. So what, what, the reason why we did a five-year plan was to try to figure out how, how and when buses are available for replacement, when we have the funds available to purchase those buses, and try to weed that number down so that we're within our spare ratio. Does that answer your question? The, the other question I have is how soon do we need to weed our fleet down in order to stay in qualification for the finances? That, that's a good question. <laughs> um, we, we are, uh, as part of our review for next year, our training will review, the, the idea is to have this plan uh, for them to review um, that shows we are making progress towards doing that. Um, if this is not acceptable, then we may have to adjust that plan. Any other questions? Okay, then we'll go on to the uh, monthly update information. Rich? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. A um, couple of key things. The, the bus stop installations are still occurring. Um, we've had quite a few issues getting permits for all of the stops because of the locations, um, but we're still working through uh, trying to get as many as we can. Many of the stops are going to require that we do pullouts uh, for the buses to get them uh, out of the the, the line of traffic, so we'll be working on maybe doing that next year. Um, we did go through a process of adjusting the, the routes that we implemented in July. There were a few in Merced that needed some extra time, so we added some extra time. We spent quite a bit of time uh, re-looking at the routes on the west side, uh, not only that serve Los Panos, uh, but uh, Dos Palos and Gastine as well. So we're making some changes to those schedules and routes, uh, hopefully January 1st. All the schedules are done. We need to, uh, we're sending, I've sent them off to be uh, the new brochures printed. So once we have those, then we'll start a public outreach and we'll go out to the west side and ride buses and hand them out and show people the new routes and schedules and so forth. Uh, we have the new software now for our uh, paratransit, which is the uh, uh, dispatch for Dialeride, or what we used to call Dialeride. Um, that just got, uh, th just went live this last week, earlier this week. Um, and then we're gonna get the mobile data terminals installed, the computers that are gonna go on the buses so that they can communicate with dispatch. That's gonna be in the next week or so, um, so that they can communicate back and forth. We also are finishing out the camera installation project that all the, we had our cameras installed on all the buses. The last piece of that was to get, which is essentially a, a modem, a Wi-Fi modem installed on the buses so that we can remotely download the, the, the video as the bus pulls into the yard so we don't have to chase the buses down pulling out videos. So that, that was happening this last week and the last, this is the last weekend that they're gonna work on it. I had that our new website launches tomorrow, but it actually launched on the way over here today. Lori checked it and it was, it's gone live. So as the MCIG website has gone live, the, the, the bus, uh, we said the bus.com has also gone live. And then looking forward to next month, uh, we have been working on putting together a draft public participation plan so you'll see that next month. Um, and then also working on uh, a few RFPs. One is for the bus, actual bus purchases that, that was mentioned in the, in the item before. Um, and uh, we, we have received word that um, we have the funding now to do the bus wraps for the buses. So now we can pull all the stickers off that are half peeling off all the buses and clean them up and get them wrapped. So we'll need to put together an RFP for that as well. And that's what I have. Questions of Rich? Route change for the uh, for the person in the neighborhood on the south side. Do you remember? On Jefferson? Yeah, that's yeah. already been done. Okay. That was already rerouted uh, months ago. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Anyone in the public? Thank you.
Thanks, Rich. Next, we have the uh, MCAG Governing Board meeting, and we'll begin with uh, the Caltrans report from Ken Baxter. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Mr. Chair and directors. And uh, Mr. Chair, it's nice to see you back again. <coughs> I've missed you for a few months. Um, just a couple of things. I just want to say on, on pavement markings, you heard a little issue here uh, this, this afternoon about that. I know for a fact, typically these are two-person crews, uh, two workers, and you have a lead person that uh, is responsible for the safety and the signing and what's going on, that type of thing. So when you have four or five or six, it could be two crews, it could be a safety issue, it could be just the complexity of the environment as far as safety, I don't know. But whenever anyone in the public has a concern, if you want to shoot me an email, I'll get on it, uh, ken.baxter at dot.ca.gov because we do appreciate anything as far as efficiency and improvements uh, to what we do. So anybody is always more than welcome to, to get a hold of me and I'll get it to the right person. So that, that's important. Um, a couple of things on the uh, construction work, uh, Arbolita, I, I drove that, went down there and drove it before I came to the board meeting because I haven't seen the, the progress for many months on that. It's 65% done. We're looking at uh, May 2015 for completion, uh, Plainsburg. So right around the corner, it's 30% done, but we're, we're slated, we're targeted for June uh, 2015 to be completed the next month after Arbolita. So good progress on that. Um, the Outwater Merced Expressway, don't have a percentage, but we're looking at February 2016 on that. Um, another big one here for the area is Bradley overhead, 75% done, slated for 1114 on the completion, Los Banos bypass. We'll hear more about that on the programming side from Matt. But it looks like all indicators are looking at a 2017-18 uh, construction start. So don't know, but it looks like we're lining things up on the programming side for that. Um, and I do want to mention uh, that uh, the Stevenson Rehab, I know there's a few people monitoring that on 165. That should go out for a funding award uh, in, probably in December, it looks like, for CTC for uh, commission action on that. Then we're looking at uh, construction spring 2014. So that's something that we've been trying to get accomplished for quite some time. I do want to make a note that uh, the statewide California rail plan is finalized and uh, hard copies are out and about. And there's a website if you're interested. It, uh, I've been on vacation, came back this morning, had seven volumes on my desk. It's not an overnight reading task. It's going to take you a long journey to... <laughs> If you're interested, but it has the San Joaquin's as a separate entity or volume. It's got the statewide master plan, the high-speed rail blended systems in there. Uh, everything's in there. It's quite impressive. Uh, the website, if you do, do want to look at it electronically, to go green, the three W's, and then it's one word. It's California State Rail Plan, all combined, CaliforniaStateRailPlan.com. So if you're interested in that, because I know there's a few people uh, involved with that. That's all I have. If you have any questions or anything I can do to help. Questions of uh, Ken? And, and Supervisor Davis, I'm working on that one item on the light. I've got some information. We'll get back to you here in a day or two. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. All right, sir. Thank you. Next, we have the consent agenda. Uh, the minutes of October 17th and the appointment of the Assistant Advisory Committee representative, student rep, uh, Jaron Brandon. Is there a motion? Who, Lynn, you have a motion? Aunt Nettie, second. second. Discussion? Comments from the public? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have item 14th information discussion only. And we have uh, the minutes of November 13th, uh, Technical Review Board, the Regional Transportation Impact Fee Report, Fiscal Year 13-14, First Quarter, the MCAG Fiscal Year 13-14, First Quarter Report, July 2-13th through September 2-13, the Commute Connection Progress Report, the MCAG 214 Meeting Calendar, and the truck and bus regulation impact on small businesses. Any of those items anyone wish to discuss or make comments on? Seeing no one 
interested will go on to item number 15, which is the final draft of the 214th Regional Transportation Improvement Plan. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, this is basically the same thing as uh, the previous draft that we um, talked about last month. So basically every two years we get a um, allocation, or not an allocation, but an amount from the state that we get to program to projects that are important to us. And so we got a little bit more money um, and we had some money in the bank already from before. And they, we asked them a question about um, how much we could advance because we were looking at if we could fund construction of the Los Panos Bypass. You know, we've been working on this for so long. And they told us we could uh, double our maximum. So that's basically what we're doing here. We're putting everything in to try and fund construction of the Los Panos Bypass in 1718. Um, so the way we do that is we take our 11 that was in the bank, we add the 11 more that they're giving us in this cycle, we double that, we have about 46, I think. Um, and then we take out our uh, percentage that we use for our planning purposes and then everything else basically would go to construction of segment one of the Los Panos Bypass. Um, so this is somewhat of a long shot um, because it does require the state to approve this and what they've told us is it depends on what everything else is. So when they look at it on a year by year basis and if the number of requests in that particular year or maybe the year after that are I guess low enough and they have room for this um, then we might get it, you know, and then maybe if we do a little bit of lobbying, we might be able to help that case some. But um, we have been told that this, you know, this, this may or may not succeed, but, you know, this is, this is our way of trying to do it and to <coughs> finally program construction. Matt, is, um, if this is approved today, does it go forward as a draft or is it the final? This is the final draft. Um, we it's submit called this a to draft the still when it's submitted to the state. No, no, it would be our. It would just be our our tip. So it's not a draft any longer. Correct. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Palace, you wanted to come in on this item. Okay. We got you down for sixteen now. All right. Questions on this item? So the action required or requested is to approve the. Uh, the final 214th Regional Transportation Improvement Program as submitted. Valalta motion, Lynn Davis second. Discussion or comments, anyone in the public? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, item 16 is the Regional Transportation Plan Preferred Scenario. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, so we've been working on our regional transportation plan for about a year now, and we've just completed our second round of workshops. Um, so these workshops were to talk about the item before you, a scenario, and we had 10 workshops throughout the county. We had about 100 people come in total, which is pretty good from our perspective. Sometimes some of our workshops, we don't get a lot of attendance. Um, and we heard a lot of different things, a wide variety of output uh, input, and uh, the attachment to the staff report summarizes that, out, that input. Basically, um, we had a lot of <coughs> folks um, who were very passionate about scenario A, um, and they had um, a lot of well-articulated reasons why they preferred that scenario, and we also had a lot of people who were very passionate about scenario C, and likewise, they had reasons why they strongly supported that. Um, we also had some support for scenario B. Um, the Staff report also contains um, kind of a summary of the differences between the scenarios. Basically, they're all just examples of how the region might grow. Uh, I have to emphasize very strongly this is not a land use plan. There's a lot of confusion out in, I guess, just out there about what the RTP does and what the su sustainable community strategy is all about. So this is not binding on local um, land use authority at all. And in fact, all of our scenarios are consistent with your general plans. That was, that was basically what we talked about at the very beginning, was that we needed to make sure that all of our scenarios were consistent. Um, and so they are. Um, another thing that's been talked about a lot is the greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. And all of our scenarios 
will make that target if we go in valley-wide, which is how the targets were set. So in other words, the state set a target for the whole San Joaquin Valley. And when we pool our totals with the rest of the valley, we will make the target. This is based on everybody else's drafts as well. If we have to go just as Merced County, none of our scenarios would make it. Um, so that's something that's, that's out there as well. Um, I guess that's, that's basically just to summarize the input that we heard. Um, staff's recommending scenario B, um, kind of because we did hear a broad spectrum of feedback. And also the other reason is scenario B is the one that's most closely um, built on the blueprint, which uh, we adopted about five years ago, um, that blueprint planning scenario. So scenario B in this plan um, very closely matches what was done in that plan. So we feel that there's some continuity there. Um, you have any questions on the scenarios or anything about the regional transportation plan? Um, oh, I also should mention that the Citizens Advisory Committee um, also had a very lengthy discussion about this and they did recommend um, that the um, board encourage additional and creative outreach with their help and we think that's a fantastic suggestion. Um, in fact, for when the draft is released in March, we're thinking of doing um, a number of open houses, um, a, kind of a, a, a format where people can ask as many questions as they want on any of the subtopics that they want. Um, and we would do many of those open houses um, and we would welcome input from the Citizens Advisory Committee on where those should be and how they should be run and all that kind of stuff. Okay, we have some comments from the, the uh, public, uh, Mr. Stembaugh. And less policy. Yeah, Frank Stombach from Los Banas. Uh, I just noticed in these. Uh, graph that he presented that uh, Merced seemed to go for the scenario C, uh, South Merced, which is more of a city-wide area, if you want to call it that, all went for B, and Los Benes and Delhi, uh, I think very strongly went for the scenario A, and I think that's probably represented by the people that have moved into our community they're, they're commuting out of the Bay Area because they, they're sick and tired of the Agenda 21 stack and, and uh, stack, stack and pack situation. So I, I don't know how you do it, but I'd like to see it so that these uh, different communities are not all put in the same type of situation. You got to do this one thing and to heck with the rest of it. Uh, I, I was uh, in, in Los Benes. There's eight or seven votes for scenario A, and there's one vote for uh, uh, none are good. And that was my vote. And the reason for that was that the information that I had available, I guess because of the engineering background, was not sufficient to make any kind of decision on it. I will say that. Uh, Matt here just I think in this last week has furnished me with several websites that he works with that maybe I can get the information I want for future meetings to make a better decision on it. But just keep in mind that Los Banas is definitely in favor of the non-stack and pack type of development. Less policy from Los Banos. I um, wanted to talk about this. Well, Matt says that housing is not involved in this, and SB 37 is voluntary. It's voluntary at this time. You know how the state has a tendency to turn voluntary into uh, this is voluntary, but you don't get the money if you don't voluntarily do this. So I would be careful about looking into the implications. The other thing is, this is supposed to be you know, public input. The public has spoken that they over 52% that they want 
option A with the least, with the most open uh, space in the community. If you do option A, the, this gives the county and the city still the flexibility to go to stack and pack and high density if those people want it or if the free market would say this is the thing to do. If a builder comes in and says they want to put a three-story high walk up with uh, rancid uh, food stores under the first floor, that's something that you in the community can determine. But if you go with B now, you're going to have to be forced eventually into small lots, multi-story buildings that, that will not be uh, attractive to the people who moved out here for the ruralness, like Mr. Stombach said. They want to come out here for the room because they're tired of the stack and pack congested uh, areas from the Bay Area. So I recommend that you listen to the public with their over 50 percent uh, choice for A and that it gives you the flexibility to improve, to, to go to higher density in your planning if you want to individually. If Merced wants to go to 30 houses per acre, that's their choice. But let's leave the most free market options available for this city to grow. And that's what I wanted to, thank, uh, to say. And I want to welcome uh, Director O'Banion back. I forgot to say that earlier. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Anyone else in the public wish to make comments? Okay. Uh, Stan, you had a question. Matt? I had a comment. Uh, okay, go ahead. I think this gentleman makes a good point. SB 375 is voluntary as far as non-governmental. Uh, this is non-binding now. But once, it, once it's a county MCAG document and, and that goes across the states, or I mean the counties across the state, uh, it doesn't take much legislation to say now they're binding. So I definitely would only support A, only because the law says we have to have one. <laughs> Not because I really like A also, but I understand we have to have a plan by, by state law. So um, he's correct if cities want to, uh, you know, use the higher density per acre in particular uh, developments or processes, but C essentially eliminates cul-de-sac. And a lot of people move here because of that quality of life. So, uh, and no town that I know of has actually officially accepted the blueprint anyway. So I don't know why MCAG would telegraph blueprint when nobody's done it. In fact, I don't think it's even been introduced to any city, the actual blueprint product for the cities under 50,000. So that's my comment. Other comments? comments and uh, agree with Mr. Policy. Other comments? All right, what's the pleasure of the commission? We have to approve uh, Plan A. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve Plan A. Further discussion? All right. Other comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Unanimous. Okay, item number 17, the Regional Transportation Plan Environmental Impact Report Contract. Um, Margie had, or Matt? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, we have to do an environmental impact report on our regional transportation plan, <coughs> and we released a request for proposals for 30 days, and that ended last Friday, and unfortunately, we did not get any proposals at that time. Um, so on Monday, I called up somebody who had asked a question during the uh, RP period um, that seemed like they were interested, and I asked them why they didn't, um, and they explained that they thought that maybe the time and effort into putting the proposal together might not be worth their chance of winning, which, you know, be that as it may, I asked them if they could submit a proposal. 
um, and they did. So De Novo Planning Group, which is a firm in Sacramento, submitted a proposal to us What's yesterday. The the planning group? Called De Novo Planning Group. Okay. They're a well-respected firm. They've done about at least 10 of these in the last few years. Um, and the proposal they submitted yesterday was adequate. It meets all of our needs, and it's within our budget. Um, so I recommended that to the director that um, she award that contract. Um, it's under $30,000, so it's, it's within the director's authority. How much is it? Uh, it's 29 something Yeah, sure enough, it's under 30 mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's under the authority that the uh, executive director already right. has. Or the board could take an action if they wish. Yeah. All of you heard what's suggested to go forward with. Any objections to that? Let us know now or forever. Keep quiet. So as the council, do we have to take an action to take no action? No. <laughs> no, it didn't take an action because it's under the jurisdiction of the executive director's authority. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Okay. One voice program. Lori. Maybe before we get started in this, and we could have a report, but there has been a request by a few of the board members that were unable to be here to continue this item to the next meeting. So is what's the pleasure of the commissioners that made this meeting? Is there any time criticality to it? No. Okay. I'm, I don't object. Okay, we have a motion to continue. Second. In a second, Stan, comments, discussion? We need to emphasize to especially those that are not here today and all of you that are here today, be at the next meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you for the report, Lori. You're very welcome. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, item number 19th is the uh, San Joaquin Valley Policy Council appointment and as well as the San Joaquin Valley Partnership recommendation for a name to be submitted to the governor. Lori. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Welcome back. Uh, good afternoon, directors. Director Oliveira and Director Pedroso currently serve as our representatives on the San Joaquin Valley Policy Council, which is a council that encompasses two elected officials from each of the eight counties in the San Joaquin Valley. Um, Director Oliveira has a lot on his plate and he's requested to step down from that role. And so we are requesting, if there's anyone else interested, we could bring your name back for appointment. I know that Director Walsh and Director Villalta have both expressed interest of possibly serving, and I just wanted to see if there were any, if there's anyone else. And then at the same time, the San Joaquin Valley Partnership, which is an appointment made by the governor, um, has requested that we submit three applications for him to appoint somebody. Currently, Director Oliveira serves. His term expires next month. He says that he may still be interested in serving, but we need two additional applicants to submit to the governor for consideration. It does not have to be a member of the MCAG board. We are just the vetting agency. So if there's anyone else on the city councils that have interest, they're eligible to submit an application as well. Okay, so let's take one at a time. The first one being the, the policy council. I also spoke with uh, Director Walsh. I think that his feeling is that if there is a city rep that desires to be in that position, he didn't want it, did not want to interfere with that since there already was a county rep on there. So we have one name right now, uh, Mike Villalta. Is there anyone else that wishes to be considered for the policy council? Seeing no one come forward, um, I would recommend that we appoint uh, Mike Villalta as our rep, MCAG rep to the uh, San Joaquin Valley Policy Council. So moved. Stan Thurston, motion. Second, Bergman. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> yeah, do you accept? Yes. Thank uh, you. Yes, Chairman. I, Thank you. I, it was a, a wonderful trip, and not only that, but we were well prepared thanks to the efforts of MCAG. Okay, and the, the second item is the um, recommendation to the governor for consideration. And Joe, your name is is in there? You're on the commission now? I'm on it right now. 
Okay, and you wish to stay on it? I just put my name on it. Somebody else is mentioning it. Okay. Um, so, so Joe, Joe, and Hub has also expressed an interest in being on that one. Is there anyone else that would be have a desire to be on that one? Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, when does these names need to be submitted today? We were, it's, it's been the past month or so they've been requesting names from us. Um, so if maybe within the next week or so, um, there is an application process that I'd be happy to help anybody with um, to submit online. Okay, I'm just trying to get a time frame. This is something that would maybe nice to be take, taken back to our uh, respective city councils to ask other members if they had an interest in this rather than just the members here. Um, it's just my thoughts. But if it's we don't have the time, then we don't have the time. Well, we, we have two names right now. I would suggest that if anyone else, well, I, what we're going to get into is we'll have a bunch more coming in <laughs> with no meeting. <laughs> they, we have to bless the application before it moves forward. <laughs> so could we go ahead and appoint those two, and then if there is another one, we'll bring it back to the next meeting and then submit that name at a later date? Okay. That's good. So I'd entertain a motion to point, to approve the consideration of uh, Joe Oliveira and Hub Walsh as representatives being considered for the appoint, governor's appointment to the um, San Joaquin Valley Partnership. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? All of those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And so next meeting, we'll, if you get a name from someone else, we'll bring it, bring it forward. So uh, any of you who have someone, please make sure that Margie know the names, of, or uh, Lori, the names of that individual. Item number 20, Executive Director's Report. Mr. Chairperson, members of the board, I want to thank our, our Regional Waste Director, Brooks Stair, and I think he already left, you know. I had to get home. Anyway, he, uh, I want to thank him for hosting the Leadership Merced Class 29. They had a wonderful tour of the landfill last Friday. I'm sure they had a really good time learning about all the improvements that have been made in the last few months, and I'm sure he was really proud to show it off a little bit. So we probably should do that sometime for this board. If you're ever interested, we can um, arrange for a tour of what's going on out there so you can see it live rather than... <coughs> yeah, well, we have plenty of room in that building to have lunch in, in uh, at the admin <coughs> building. Uh, we have the new website. I want to brag about that. Uh, it looks good. And uh, transit, I just brought it up on my iPad. It didn't come up as the new website. So anyway, uh, I'm not going to announce transits today. I'm only going to announce mcagov.org. Uh, there's an opportunity to subscribe. When things get updated, you can get notified right away. So I encourage you to do that, especially for the governing board when that gets posted. And then um, any meetings we have. And then last but not least, welcome back to Jerry O'Banion. Um, so glad your health is improved and you're here once again to be chairperson. And then thank you for Stan Thurston for filling in during the um, couple of, I do. <laughs> oh, he does. Okay. I'll, I'll get out of that way then. I'll let you talk to him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margie. Stan. Uh, I did go on the website. That's very flashy. Very nice. I like that. That's an incredible piece of uh, work. And welcome back, Jerry. Glad to Thank see you back. Jerry? Welcome back. Lynn? Joe? Welcome back, Jerry, and uh, everybody else. Have a good Thanksgiving. Larry? Welcome back to Jennifer. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Mike? Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Well, in fact, if, if you think back, when it, all my problems started was on that Friday night. <laughs> That's it. But, you know, it, it eventually catches up. Dos Palos is still quite a few games ahead of Los Banos in the win streaks. So, anyhow... But it's been kind of dry for the last couple of years, to be honest. Um, anything else, Mike? No. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thank you. Did you have a closed session? 
And we do have a closed session as soon as, this, as soon as I get through. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that um, sent cards or uh, wished me well during my visits to the hospital over the last two months. And uh, Stan, thank you very much for uh, taking charge of the meetings. I didn't think about them and didn't worry about it one time during the whole time. So I knew it was in good hands. And Brooks, I, I need to get together with you and go out and see these landfills because um, I, didn't, I didn't participate in any of the discussions that you had on reduc reductions of staff or equipment and so on. And I think it'd be good to get together and go out and visit the landfills. Um, and thank you for the work that you're doing in trying to save us money out there, and Margie also. Um, that's all I have. We will be going in. I guess we'll stay right here, or how, where are we going to go? We're going to go in the back here. We'll go in the room next door for a closed session. Anything else to come before the regular meeting? Okay, we will be reporting out of closed session. There may not be anything to report, but we will report it.